did before. Forward? I don't, know. I don't remember if you did forward or reverse. Just do the opposite way. Just one. Oh, I don't remember. I'll just try it one. Oh, there, there he, is. he is. Yeah, great. Sample Yay. taken. Oh, uh, the other way. And he's got some nice <laughs> sediment okay. bed. Keep going until we're lined up with on. the flush jar. Perfect. I keep going a bit more. Right there. Nice. Okay, and come up on Delta. And Nav, before we move, can we drop a pin for that sample, please? Coming up on Delta? Yeah. Paula, does that white or color mean it's a Galapheid type? or mm? Does the white color mean it's Galapheid? Um, it seems a Galapheid. Yeah, uh, there are two superfamilies, Kirostiloids and Galatheoids. And Kirostiloids are usually found Delta back to in coral, zero, zero, so okay. probably a Galatheoid. Okay. So does this mean we can go home now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the name is. It's Sam. Oh, never mind. Squat lobster. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Probably Galatheoid. All right. Nice job. Yay! A squat lobster. Lobster successfully captured. Yeah, in jar one. That's a little little gaffer too. Hello to the roommates watching in Sydney, Australia. For those of you that just joined in, we are 2,220 meters deep at an unnamed guillot, and just north of the Johnson Atoll. Ah, uh, squat. We just sampled a squat lobster. Okay, and then once that waypoint is in, I think we can start moving either back towards waypoint two or uh, towards whatever it's called, the next waypoint. How close are we to... Yeah, you can go to three if you want. Yeah, we're 11 meters from waypoint two or something. Yeah, that, uh, that's fine. Yeah, okay, we'll go to waypoint three. Or I guess we're probably 40 meters from waypoint two, but close enough. Right. Yeah, as you can see, when sampling happens, there's a lot going on at once because the just because the ship stops doesn't mean Atlanta's going to stop. So hmm. there's a lot of action all all at one go. We're back to point five wraps. Might need to put your mic closer to your mouth. Back up to 20 Delta. Thank you. Oh, got a fish here. Another one. All right. We're going to have a little fish look. If they will, this fish will cooperate. Feel free to zoom at your leisure, Dave. Oh, come on back now. Orichinoderms here. Yeah. Do you want to look at? Yeah, let's look at those real quick. Uh, I think there's been two different types we've been seeing. So, Paula, just a refresher. What are you gonna do with that squat lobster? What are you looking for? Can you zoom in, please? I'm a, I'm a taxonomist, so I'm describing. Delima delimiting and naming new species. Um, for squat lobster, uh, there is an estimate of the 70% of the species that are still waiting to be described. So nice. this area is unexplored, so probably most of the things we are gonna find you, are new species. Thank you. All right. Oh, 
Um, yeah. Can you please zoom out on this? I just want to take a look at something. Seems like way, way out. Just want to see the next, like, yeah, okay. Um, uh, okay. I'm going to do a drastic maneuver here. I'm going to turn all the way around and we'll take, oh, preemptively take a wrap out. Okay. So if we keep turning left, the 6-8 will get a negative big old wrap in it. So I'm going to head that off of the pass by doing a full turn to starboard and you can follow me around. Okay, I'll follow you around. Whee! You get motion sickness, now is the time to look away. <laughs> Elias, you have a chance. Can you center this up, please? You can come up on your delta a little bit. Another one. Don't worry too much, because I'll be going back down again. Another fish. We're up to like 17-ish on yeah, the delta. that's all right. Ooh, kabump. like we're turning to get on the interstate. <laughs> no one's letting me merge. It was uh, an was annoying jug handle. Merges. Zipper, zipper. Zipper? Yeah, you know zipper merge? In, in New Jersey, we call them jug handles. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different thing. <laughs> Other Jersey laughs. That's what we call them in Rhode Island. Ugh. <laughs> Jersey's annoying. I'm actually from Pennsylvania, but... Gotta go to Jersey to go to the beach. Is Jersey the same as New Jersey? Yes. But not the same as New Guernsey? No. Is the beach the same as the shore? Yes. <laughs> well, the no. The shore is. It depends. The Jersey shore? No. I don't like that, that beach. <laughs> it's funny, you can head to shore, but you never head to beach. <laughs> I mean, you can. Yeah, you could. You do whatever you set, you set your mind to. All right. Wrap removed. We're almost back to half wrap. Yeah. Should I have done that? Probably not. <laughs> you can do anything you set your mind to. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, got me. I like that less than how it was. Hmm. Well, we're still waiting on the ship. There's still no science in this immediate area. I say, not knowing anything about anything. I'm going to do another thing. Are we you going can, back? You're going to stay where you were, and I'm going to do a little small one. All right, I'm just going to stop spinning around. Yeah, he does yet. you do... Are you pulling a Yui over there? Double Yui. Ooh. That's just W. We think there's a Holosorch following us. We're trying to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have the uh, aft-looking camera. Exactly. Check for tails. It's fun to watch you do this in the Atalanta cam. You're just kind of going in circles. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> oh, silly. All right. Nice. This looks great. Look okay. at those tiny little numbers now, and they cancel each other out. That's what I want. We got a 0.3 and a negative 0.4. That's Perfect. just right. Just right. Just right. Goldilocks wraps. I'm going to pull you just a little bit. Okay. 
Actually, we haven't Another done that stream. much yet. Trim, when I, trim, see, when I get to the end of my leash the there, you're <laughs> heading, will get pulled off. Do I push it back on, or? No, it's just, it's fighting. Okay. It'll fight its way back um, as the ship moves, or as I back up. But that's the other end of not too slack, that's too tight. Mm -hmm. End of your leash, we call it. It's like those little backpacks that they give to kids at aquariums. Right, yeah. <laughs> They have the little leash on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or skiing or something. Okay, so the ship's tracking a line towards the next waypoint. We're going to start seeing Atalanta movements in mere moments. And I'm done making everybody dizzy. So we talked about naming unnamed <laughs> seamounts. What about naming unnamed species? Well, when we, na we name a new species, we follow first a uh, code. I don't know about rocks or <laughs> uh, sea moons, if you have a code, but uh, for animals, we have the International Code of uh, Zoological Nomenclature, so we have a lot of rules. But we basically uh, find, well, in the past, uh, we used to select like some kind of morphological tra uh, traits and for instance um, Spinosus from spines or something like that. Also you can use um, um, topo topolo topo topographic or any other geographic characteristic for the name and you can also name a species after another researcher or after your boyfriend. <laughs> And yes. And would that be scientific names or would it be uh, common names? It, it would be a scientific name, uh, but you should Latinize or use some. Mm -hmm. um, Lodean term. Yeah. So are you hoping to be able to name a squat lobster someday? Yeah, I have named 100 oh. new species of squat lobster. 100? Yeah. Wow. I named to you. 65 new species during my PhD. Wow. And, yeah. Very cool. That's impressive. So, so yeah. for an ex-boyfriend, would it be a slug or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, there was a zoo yeah. that, for Valentine's Day, they had you name cockroaches after. <laughs> <laughs> you paid, like, five bucks or something. Is that a glass sponge? Or? Looks like. Is there, Actually, like, a dead one sponge? next year? It is, yeah. You can see in the cinema cam. Oh, oh yeah. You in the cinema oh, cam. that's a great shot. That's wild, isn't it? Almost looks like a macro lens or something. Is there two there? Is it like it a... looks like a dead one and a live one. A dead one and a live one, I yeah. think. That's an amazing yeah, shot. Another. Can I get a zoom out on this, please? So we can see Atalanta. Coral there. We should keep this cinema cam. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's an elusive white spot there. Oh yeah, I can take a look. <laughs> Sometimes I get, get excited, think I see something on the Atalanta cam and it's just the tether. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it can get pretty exciting. What is that long, thin thing? Maybe a shelf? Maybe <laughs> a special a shelf? This, what is that? The special area? Shelf <laughs> on a shelf in a special area? Where all the rocks are stored? Lots of kind of durums. Three. And another acorn worm. That, uh, one, yeah. that one's a small acorn worm. I keep seeing like these little light greeny things, or I don't know what it, if there's something there. We can have a look. We 
Okay, go ahead and zoom there, please. Remember, just nothing. That looks like just flipped over uh, yep. rocky bits. Oh, yeah, little sorry, schmutz. I got my leash there. <laughs> so that's what you mean by squishy rocks? Come wide, please. So that's a squishy rock. Squishy. And you can tell they're squishy even through oh, a just, camera? Just by the color. Oh. So oh, another one? There are like some corals there. With all these acorn worms, I want to give the unofficial nickname to this geo as Acorn Worm Town Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> acorn Worm Town Mountain. Yes. I love it. Call it Acorn Worm Valley. But it's a town. And okay. They all live here. <laughs> Happily. Acorn Worm to town? town is actually the name of my... Uh, Deep Sea Country Folk Band. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play in the deep sea? I hope not. That sounds unpleasant. <laughs> He's just the country folk. I think the acorn worms would like it. In the chat, Sydney Guy asks, why is everyone's favorite thing to find during these dives? Sydney Guy. Sydney Guy. Is that Sydney, Australia or Sydney, Nova Scotia? Who knows? If you want to answer Sydney Guy, let us know. Australia or Nova Scotia. But what is everyone's Probably favorite thing to find during these dives? Vancouver Island. Yeah, Sydney, BC. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think everything is exciting, but uh, I kind of biased <laughs> spot lobster. I was going to say the spot lobster, you <laughs> jumped out of your seat for that one. <laughs> During the last hour of the watch, the thing I most want to find is my bunk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a meal, depending on the time of day. Some snacks. I, I actually like what you see, the, like the oases of corals and everything together. Hey Trevor, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna swap video over here for just Roger. a second. Swapping video. Yeah, what, the oases of corals, they're super fun when they're on a big rock too. It'll be Herc or four times Herc sized rock. That's my favorite. Sydney guy, if you've been tuning in, my favorite thing to find is the shrimp. The shrimp? Shrimp tally. Uh, Sydney guy, my favorite was the uh, jellyfish so far. Mm. That Especially was when Trevor turned on the lights and we all went, ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, Sydney guy is actually the Sydney roommates from Sydney, Australia. Ah, uh, Sydney so. roommates. Ah. Sydney guy is many Sydney <laughs> folks. Only one gets the title. You live in a beautiful city. I was just there in March. For leisure, or were you? For work. Working. Work and leisure, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite thing to find on these dives are hydrothermal vents. Yeah. This dive, 
I'll go with the tuna kit, but in general, I'll be biased and say hydrocephalopod. Amazing the number of sea urchins here. Yeah, and they seem to be in a triangle. That's for the ritual. <laughs> This makes me think of like a ski slope or a side of a mountain covered in snow. Yeah. Dave in the chat says, when you find a lot of acorns, aren't you usually in Oak Arbor? Mm. Ah. Who's Peeville Dave? Uh, before he said he was a um, longtime viewer. Evil Dave. Thanks for being a longtime viewer. Longtime viewer, first time caller. For those of you who have um, been on dives before, what's your favorite thing you've ever seen? Are we limited to just this ship? Um, no. Favorite thing I've ever seen? Mm hmm I found a bathroom. A bathroom? bathroom? Yeah. Underwater? Bathtub and toilet. What? Nah. Like, was it in a structure or was it just... Just loose. Loose. Just, yeah. Wow. Someone ditched a bathroom overboard. Where was this? Oh, uh, some weird small spot coastal bc oh, okay all right it was very unexpected but it was very hilarious how was its cleanliness oh the animals had cleaned it up it good to clean. know if i ever need to go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> dumbo octopus Ooh. Ooh. dumbo octopus are very cool i've yeah. seen Three, do you think we could see one here? It's possible. Yeah. How deep do they go? Do they live? Uh, down here on the bottom. We've seen them out here before. Cool. I remember at NA110 on Jarvis Island, there was this bank of incredibly blue coral that ended up being a new species. It was just, there's pictures of it online. Oh, it's I was just there for that. Gorgeous. The, on the big steep cliff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was just incredible. It almost made you feel like the camera was like color balanced. Right? Yeah. But it was not. I remember that as some fascinating terrain too. There was like some really weird vertical, uh, just like square corners. Yeah, limestone stuff. cliffs and everything. Yeah. That was just amazing. That was really fun. Looks like an old uh, sponge, the ferret. Sponge. Has it been crusted over? Yeah, I think it's. Let's have a zoom in, please, video. Or is it just a rock? Ah, it's just a rock. Oh, we can keep zooming in on the rock. Give the rock some love. <laughs> yeah, good there. Yep, that's just a rock. Nice flat rock. Okay, thank you. You can come wide. The internet tells me that Dumbo octopuses can be from 2,987 meters to 3,962 meters. That's very precise. I had to, it was, they had it in feet, so I had to um, <laughs> convert it to meters, so it was Roger. very precise. Feet-wise, it would be uh, 9,800 feet to 13,000 feet. So that pulls the biological accuracy of finding Nemo into serious question, because they had one of those on a reef. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, the friend that was like, you made me ink. Remember that? She was she a was Dumbo octopus? Yeah. I thought she was just an octopus. No, she was a Dumbo. Aww. Can Dumbos ink? I don't know. One way to find out. 
It doesn't have an ink sac. Oh. So maybe she wasn't a Dumbo. I don't remember. Did she we do was? gauge checks at the top of the last hour? Uh, Her name? Oh, she's, an, she's a did. flapjack octopus. 22 was right. the last time we did the gauge 30. check. 23, 30. That's fine. Okay. Flapjack Gage pancakes. check. Oh. I love the caps lock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bottom! We're on bottom! Uh, okay. Uh, can we do a cam switch to uh, yeah, go bubble? For it. Oh, good. Uh, video, do you mind bringing that over here? Because I cannot see. Thank you. We're going to put the bubble cam on that screen. To okay. use the Herc Brow cam. You can probably just fire dive salvo even. 90% chance that works. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. And if we're doing it like that, you can, you can hit the dive salvo as well. That's the purple buttons on this panel. The top left one it says dive. That should put cool. that video in this configuration. Thank you. Depends how much you want to annoy Panos. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, if a Dumbo octopus only lives in an environment where there's no light, why would they need an ink sac? Um, and that's exactly what I read they didn't need an ink sac for, because there's no light. Is the ink just a uh, light thing? Well, it's a defense mechanism, right? So totally. it's Smell nothing bad? could see. I thought it was like goopy and sticky as well. Oh, yeah, But that's I, true. I don't know. I have no idea. All right, looking at craft. But I guess it's much easier to get away when things can't really see you anyway. Some creatures have ink that bioluminescence, right? Mm. Mm, right, yeah. Uh, someone in the chat is uh, hoping to get a degree in marine biology. Is there any advice you have to get a field position like this, or is it just good old fashioned dedication and elbow grease? So I'm guessing they're asking how do we get a, a, a position like this? How do you? get in the field studying marine biology. Just follow your passion and um, yeah, don't lose enthusiasm and follow your your instinct. I would say it's a combination of grit and experience. Um, try and start by getting volunteer experience which can then lead to getting internship experience and you can rack up your internships and apply for the ocean science internship uh, that the Nautilus offers. Because that's how I started out with Nautilus, and now I'm a science manager in training. But there are a lot of internships that are available uh, to people who want to take that path, especially if you're in the States. There are a whole bunch of opportunities available. Uh, there's the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences. There's Moat Marine Lab in Florida. There's Ambari the in California, up on the and of course there's OET. Yeah, go on our website, nautiluslive.org. There's resources there for um, opportunities to, to intern and to work with the OET, um, also, as well as educational resources. Also, don't be afraid to try and reach out into different fields. Like, marine biology is great, but there's a lot of different positions that are needed for an operation like this. That's very true, yeah. I mean, we got the ROV pilots, we got the navigator, scientist. Uh, I'm a science communication fellow, so communication. 
and if you're a U.S. citizen, there's always National Science Foundation fellowships or internships, as well as Office of Naval Research. Mm -hmm. has a lot of these. Hey, back road, just so you know, we're uh, going to be off operations for a little bit. The ship's doing some stuff with their DP. Once they're finished, they'll let us know, and we can resume normal operations. Okay. Copy that. Thanks, Trevor. Hey, RV, when you get a moment, could you actually uh, power cycle the full triclop system? Triclops power is secure. This is mostly just to see what happens when we do that and make sure it comes back up again. Sounds good. I'll leave it for 30 seconds and turn it back on. Wonderful. Hey, video, I might... Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> the infinite spiral. Yeah. Can you come up on Delta, please? Yep, coming up on Delta. Video, can I turn on uh, some Atalanta lights so I can see the comp? You can do whatever you'd like. Oh, I can do whatever. You can give them a heads up. Okay. Thank you. That Looks like they have jet pump right? back now. What about Great. this one? Thank you. Ooh, what about that one? Huh? Pole position's fine, yeah. Turn and once they've held position, we'll stabilize, then we'll do another track align. I can't. So what I was watching during that was that wire. If they're going backwards too fast, then that wire can actually rub against the transom, and that's a risk to losing okay, the Okay, video, turning the lights back off. So if they fine, really you. have a long time of trouble, then I'll ask them to change their heading so that... Uh, that the, they pull away from the wire instead of down towards it. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'm going to stop coming off bottom now and I will do auto depth. Stay here until they're held position. Finish swinging in and then we'll resume regularly scheduled programming. Are we pausing for a ship move? That's correct, yeah, the ship had to do some uh, drastic maneuvers. Alrighty, thanks. Am there. I able to share another chat question or do you want me to hold off on that? Uh, uh, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, Sydney guy's back and he actually wants to go into the field of marine biology. So he wants to know um, what Spiked everyone's interest in ocean, uh, ocean, uh, ocean. Open the iris on, uh, on uh, Atlanta. Yeah, it's the little knob there. Do you want me to? Yeah, any, anyone in? Okay. Anyone? Anyone? I'll go first. Um, so I was really drawn to ocean science because of the exploration yeah. okay. aspect. That's why I'm really I'm fascinated sure by deep sea here. ocean science specifically I'll walk away for a minute and, and um, I actually and didn't take any up. marine ecology courses or marine courses until the last year of my undergrad I just took general biology um, but in that last year that's when I got really interested in ocean courses and I wrote my first literature review on a topic of my choosing which I chose hydrothermal vents and then once I researched those it was just kind of like a aha moment for me uh, I've never been so excited by anything science in my life, so <laughs> it was a very quick click for me myself, even though it was a pretty late discovery. What's your favorite event? Oh, the Lost City events, because Lost they're City. carbonate instead of uh, sulfide like most of the events we come across. Ooh, good choice. And those are located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge for anybody who's interested. <laughs> Is the Atlanta iris like auto-irising or something? Really no, we're trying to figure that out. There's not enough lights on, I think. 
it's, to we're, turn some on? We're in, I don't know. We're in manual iris. Okay. And there oh. is a set point. Sorry. It is a not continuously variable, so if you can land halfway between two settings, it'll hunt back and forth. Right. But we've got it wide open right now. Okay. Uh, and that doesn't seem to be Weird. normal. Weird. Yeah. See, now it's on that one of those half settings. But. All right, looks like we're still creeping in over this way, so still going up slope a little bit. Trevor, I'm still trying to sort out uh, showing you uh, cinema cam or triclops, as we call it. Yeah, I got uh, that on, on this screen here. Okay. So this, I edited this, and so this particular one has, uh, what it does is it moves the, the bow, uh, brow camera over. Okay, that's on the fourth salvo? Yeah. Okay. I, cool. I don't know if it's on your, if it's the fourth salvo on your panel or not. But what it doesn't show. Yeah, stand by, Dave. Yeah. Okay, sorry, what was that, Dave? Well, I'm just trying to sort out these salvos. Yeah, and yeah. The normal dive salvo has uh, the Atalanta camera here. Yes. And is, and is that what we want? Uh, I, can, I can get rid of that. This is this is actually quite fine. Again, the normal one, let's keep the normal one alone. Leave okay. all the normal salvos alone. For the fourth salvo, yeah. I think what you have set up here is great. The only change I'd make is getting that bubble cam, that brow cam, change back to the 60 hertz. Up here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can you come up on Delta, please? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Totally. Especially when you do a hard 90 degree off to the west. <laughs> vert, vert. I'll tell you why I became a marine zoologist. My um, true passion since I was a child was um, invertebrates. And when I took, I, I also took biology, general biology as a degree. But uh, when I got my scuba diving course, I got in love with marine invertebrates. And then I follow, I, I was wondering where um, the biodiversity is less known. And then I started to study deep sea, deep sea uh, creatures. A lot of passion here. Yeah. different the rocks here in this side right no, no, but they're, they're pretty much the same with that we've seen before it's just it has the botryoidal texture more see all the bumps on it that's from the manganese 
But there were some rocks a little while ago that were much darker and not covered as much sediment. They looked a little different, but I didn't see any rock that we could have sampled. Why is manganese the thing that sticks to these rocks instead of any of the other elements and minerals and metals that are in the dissolved in the water? I mean, there's there's two different ways they think that these things happen. One is just a precipitating on top of the rock, and uh, it's almost like an elect electroplating that somehow a, a negative charged starts first. Okay, video zoom please. And then a positive minerals get on, then negative, and so it kind of keeps plating itself. But then there's also a diagenetic effect that maybe they think that the uh, pore water is coming up from underneath uh, create the manganese coating. And they're not sure if microbes are uh, assisting or uh, the whole process as well. It's a really poorly known uh, process. Okay. Then the ones on the s sides of the mountains are, you know, sea mounts are a little Thank different you, than what you see in the uh, seafloor. For the large nodules. Interesting. Botryoidal? Is that the word? Uh, RV, when you get a moment, want to give me a uh, Tricops power oh, again? Yeah, of course. Sorry. I said 30 seconds, then we had some other things going on. Power's on. And it looks like it's talking again. Thank you much, Lee. That was weird. I don't know if you saw the same thing, Tim, when it started up there, that it was all wavy. Yeah, I guess wobbly sometimes. That was I think wild. that's just the uh, live video stream from it, but... Yeah, it could be. Neat looking, though. All right, I want to get... In the right are spot. we back in action now? We are 85% back in action. Okay. I got to do just a little bit more maneuvering here, but we can stop anytime. Trevor, can we try switching between the dive salvo and the fourth button dive salvo? There's dive. There's fourth. Looks like I there's got it. Dive. All. There's fourth. Looks good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Wonderful. That'll make it easier yes. on uh, all of us. Absolutely. Appreciate that. You betcha. So we can age rocks, but can we age the sediment? Like, is there a way to tell how long the sediment's been okay. kind of sitting there? Yeah, you could age it a couple of different ways. Uh, one, you could just look at the, the fossils. Is You know, if you get a core of the sediment, so you can go down and look at the uh, the evolution of the of the uh, plankton and stuff in the coca list to see what rains they were around and when they went extinct. So that's some sort of a, a biostratigraphy. And you can also use magnetics as well. So if it's more iron rich sediments because the earth's polarity changes that the polarity in the sediments of the iron pieces is going to alternate. 
And so you can actually map that to a really well-known polarity time scale. And then depending on the age, you can actually do uh, radiocarbon dating for some of these things, or if there's other particles. I think it's just mainly, you know, radiocarbon is, is the way to do it, but there may be some other, uh, you know, radioactive parent-daughter relationships that you could possibly use for different age ranges as well. And that would have nothing to do with the age of the rocks underneath nope. it, though? Other than the sediments would be younger. Yeah. So for those of you tuning in at home, uh, we are about to change watches, so just bear with us for a moment.
How about now? Copy that. All right. Which way are we heading? I should have asked Trevor that. Due south, okay. Mostly south, 190. All right, let's go back to bottom. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Folks settling in. We don't have a ship move in right now, do we? We do, okay. Are we, hold on, let me turn you up, Lynette. I can't hear you. Um, what, uh, are we doing point two moves? Point two not moves? I think you're not on SPL. Correct, I was not on SPL. Um, yeah, we're doing point two knots, um, and we have a big old ship move in right now, 400 meters south. Commitment to being like, this is boring. <laughs> okay, sounds good. We can keep on that then. Uh, how far into that move are we, into that 400 meters? Uh, I don't know how long the initial move was for. We have 400 meters left. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. I misunderstood that. That's a big, that's a big move. <laughs> um, but it looks like that should be fine. So I guess let's just, yeah, continue in that direction. Maybe start with point two and if it's- Are we going, uh, let me see. So yeah, I was just gonna say, I'll just hold it here for a sec. <clears throat> that, that feels better. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, better, yeah. I feel like we want to cross the slope, yeah. Okay. Okay, no problem. And I will uh, come up the slope a little bit.
James, whenever you get everything settled, just let me know. I'll get started. Sure. I think we need to get the uh, ship to slow down. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to get back, uh, just go a little bit faster to catch up to the uh, to the ship. Yeah, so I think you're probably pulling Atalanta right now. Yeah. Try to swing it back around. Go back this way. Sorry? Um, I'm making progress. Better. We're starting to. Okay, I think we might need to get the ship to slow down or maybe stop. Sure, we can hold position. Momentarily while we uh, get back to a better position. Yep. Sorry, Mike. Okay, here we go. This is me oh. learning. This is me learning. <laughs> Sorry, we're coming back. It's starting to feel better, too. All right. What's happening here? Oh, I'm learning. There we go. Okay. Sea cucumber. Sea cucumber or something. Yep. So you, yep.
I'm, I'm I'm pulling you around a little bit. We're uh, we felt way behind the ship, so I'm kind of pulling us back. Okay. All right. Mm, I did that, but I can log into mine too. So yeah, so I just took a closer up one too, like as we zoom, just I like if we get I try and get whatever the closest is so we end up to make sure of that. Sorry, what was your name? We should go around and do introductions whenever you're ready, James, up there. Yeah, sure, let's do it. All right, sounds good. Thank you for joining us. This is the 12 to 4 watch, and we are about 75 miles north of Johnston and Atoll on an, an unnamed guillot. Um, and my name is Ashley Glickley. I am a science communication fellow and teacher from Louisville, Kentucky. And we're going to go on the back row one at a time. Everybody can introduce themselves. You're next, Tyson. <laughs> Um, yes, I think we can do that. Go ahead, Haisa. Hi, everyone. I am Haisa Hogan. I am oceanographer, and I'm part of the ocean of the science team. Uh, I am here as a member of the Ocean Census Network, and that's it. Thank Sounds you. like your mic might be muted. Uh, and, uh, and it needs to be very close to your mouth. And we didn't hear much of anything that you said. Okay, and now? She's got pretty close. Okay. Can, can you hear now? Go ahead and introduce yourself again, please. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Haisa Hogan. I am part of the science team. I'm oceanographer and uh, my interest in deep sea corals. Um, and I am part as well of the network, Ocean Census Network. Um, uh, I'm a member, sorry, of the Ocean Census Network. Okay, very good. My name is Leela. I am science manager on this cruise and will be watch leading changing with Dwight, sharing with Dwight the watch lead position on this watch. Good morning, my name is Jane Carrick. I'm a PhD student from the University of Rhode Island. I am here uh, working as a data logger for this shift, um, chiming in on science as well. I also study deep sea coral, mainly sclerotinians, but uh, very interested to learn all more things about Pacific deep sea corals, gorgonians, sponges, all the, all the bio. Looking forward to it. Awesome, thank you. Lynette, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey everybody, I'm Lynette. Um, I am the navigator. <laughs> All right, and we have a couple pilots that are doing just a little bit of setup. So we're gonna let them introduce themselves in just a minute. So we just came off of a wonderful watch. A lot of exciting things happening at the seafloor here. We've seen um, some sponges and uh, we're able to take a sample of a squat lobster. And there's a lot of uh, really exciting things going on here. Yeah, and, and they're asking us to wave when we introduce ourselves. So, so we'll do the best we can on that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and get started here. There's a good question in the Chris chat. And um, how can you get a good sample sure. for radiocarbon dating if the old and new carbon is constantly cycled Come throughout the ocean? On. So one of the answers to that question is the rocks that we are sampling are not going to be carbon dated. There is a different process that we use. Um, Leela, do you know any more about the dating process for the rocks? Um, I do not actually know how they're processing these rocks back at, uh, at URI. Sorry, I wish I had a better answer for that. We have a well represented by a watch, but we uh, we need our geo friends to chime in. Yeah. 
I am guessing not radiocarbon because that's pretty short um, half-life and the rocks that we're looking at are between 50 and 90 million years old. So we're uh, going to use, they, they are using something with a longer half-life um, to calculate that. Probably argon, argon, I believe is the Thank, process. Thanks, Dwight. <laughs> that was our... Our resident 12 to 4 watch geologist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dwight. And in our previous watch, we also had a shrimp count going. Did anybody get the final count before we came up? I think it was 11. We've seen 11 shrimp tonight. So <laughs> we're we're going to keep it going, see yeah. how many more we can get. Uh, we also forgot someone in the front row who can't introduce themselves, video seat. Sorry about that video seat. You're right behind my monitor. No, no Go ahead. Worries. Hello, my name is Panos, and I'm the video engineer for this shift. My name is Dave Robertson. I'm the uh, lead video engineer for uh, this cruise. Uh, training Panos and uh, hanging out. Just finished my watch. Work part of Panos's watch. Then I'll be back to wa work part of the next watch. And uh, if you see me, I'm sleepy. And if you don't see me, I'm asleep. That's exactly what I was going to ask you, Dave. When do you sleep? Oh, uh, we'll get a, get these guys up to speed pretty quickly, and then uh, then I'll get some sleep. So, well, the um, star stars are looking pretty beautiful out there. James, whenever you have a moment, would you mind uh, zooming on that coral in front of us, or I guess coordinating with Panos on zooming? Don't zoom until he tells you. Hey, you guys go right ahead. Here, I'll try to center it in the camera. One, no, I'm going to need to check on it. One second. Some kind of chrysogorgia. Uh, it looks like almost like a sparse. If we could go really tight on those polyps, if we have a chance. I know it's kind of, we're a little far right now. Um, it almost looks like sparse geniculata, but I, uh, it might also be tricolis or something. Some kind of chrysogorgia. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, close pictures of that. Beautiful. That's great. Thank you. you can it looks zoom out. so tall and delicate. Uh, and James, whenever you have a moment, would you mind please cycling the still camera? I'm um, just turning it off and on because it's doing some weird stuff back here. Sure. Mike, would you mind? Uh... It's the DSC cam. Yep. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, that was my wrong. Right. 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 Shrimp. Is that another shrimp for the shrimp count? Yeah, I got it going over here on the board. All right. Oh, oh nice. yes, nice. We've got it up awesome. on the whiteboard. Are we sure it's not the same shrimp? Oh. Um, no, yeah. you can never be sure. We cannot confirm. <laughs> we're following us around. I'm pretty sure it's the same shrimp. <laughs> yeah, but we're not accounting for the ones behind us, so it all evens out in the end. Let's see if we can break 20. <laughs> All right, so we have a question in the chat that says, what are you guys hoping to discover in this new area? So we know that we are looking for any type of species that we have not seen before. Um, Jane, did you want to mention any specific species of coral that you're interested in? 
So I mainly study a species that's found in the Atlantic called Desmophyllum pertussum, um, but I'm always interested in finding any sort of sclerotinian hard corals, especially um, reef building corals. So the branching species like Analepsamia, um, Madrasis, Madri yeah, Madripoor. Mm -hmm. um, so of course I'd love to see some hard corals, but I'm especially interested to see anything that has a high number of associates since that really is what indicates the biodiversity of the area. Could those associates be part of our shrimp count too, you think? <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> hey, so what are you looking for specifically? Uh, overall, um, mostly octocorals, uh, but I work in a group like of um, sea pens. So, um, Can you give us a little bit more information like, uh, sorry, specifically uh, on the sea pen? What of, uh, conversation in the background. Oh, sorry. it's okay. Not a problem. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we are looking for octocorals. Uh, that's a um, type of uh, coral, different of the Jane. Jane, uh, her speciality would be hard ones that um, form carbonate coral reefs. Uh, for us, you'll be colonies that doesn't form uh, these reefs, but they have these chlorides um, sometimes in their uh, coenchyma, in their tissue. So, but I, but I study particular sea pens that is mostly found in this type of sediment we are now. Uh, they are they anchor themselves mostly in, in soft um, sediments, and hopefully we can see some here. Awesome! Yeah, looking forward to it. Hope we hope we do see something. Do we have, we still have the same first ship move in or how are we doing in the front? We paused that ship move um, and put in a shorter one. So we have 150 meters left. Okay. Heading south. Sounds good, thank you. We started earlier this evening um, at a depth of 2,400 meters and are currently at 2,143 and we'll continue to follow the ridge up the seamount um, looking for different species as we go along. I just so you guys know we're uh going slow um, because I got a little bit ahead of Atalanta, so we're letting it catch up. James, I'll do you have a sec to introduce yourself? Or sure, how's yeah. It going? Hi, uh, my name's James Barnett. I'm the uh, Herc pilot on the 12 to 4 shift. 
This is my first time out with Nautilus and I'm super excited. One day we'll hear from Michael. <laughs> One day, he's busy. Um, is there anything to poke around in here? I don't know if we pan around, if, if there's anything interesting at all. Might as well take advantage. Lovely rocks. Yeah, lots of rocks. We have not successfully collected very many, as in we've only collected one, and it was the only fr loose one that was found <laughs> in like the last four hours. It was not the ideal rock, but it was it was a loose rock, and that made it the ideal rock in that moment. So we will definitely keep an eye out for more rocks. When we're looking at those rocks, is it is there characteristics that we're looking for for ones that might move? You think, or for ones that might move, it's super hard. Earlier, a lot of them were really deceptive, like you know that in the center of the screen right now. There's a small one that looks like you could totally oh, yeah, you pick it up. Yeah. No, that's just like a tiny little bit peeking out of the sediment. It's actually really part of that. You kind of kind of can see on the left. There's like a sheet. It's it's all sort of cemented in the same sheet. And that's the kind of stuff what we saw all last watch. A lot um, more going on down there that we aren't able to see. Yeah, yeah. So it's really hard to say that. Yeah, that there are things you can look for, but um, on the last watch, they were mentioning that you're looking for specific colors too. I think you yeah, had, you had said that there was some coloration on the last rock that wasn't as promising, right? Right, so whenever you see the orange colors, that is alteration, it's it's oxidation of some kind. Um, and we're looking for rocks that look, well, they call them fresh, but fresh to a geologist is still like millions of years <laughs> old. <laughs> um, but hoping that the original rock that was formed, the basalt, is still in there because that's what you need to to be able to date um, and if, especially the rock we collected is flat and you could see that it had been altered from it, the original rock, um, that was the orange color. And then you could also see that on the other side, there was a bunch of crust. It was probably a pretty thick black crust and those little bumps, that's called botryoidal, um, a botryoidal rock texture. Uh, and, and that's common of crusts. Hmm. here in the deep sea um, and so since that was a pretty thin rock with crust on one side and alteration on the other side there's really a low chance that there's something we like in the in the middle what causes so all the different bumps and things that you were saying on this on the surface of the rock that you have reached the limit, <laughs> limit, of That's the limit. i don't know <laughs> i don't know how the, how that forms is that the characteristic moving on to that, more biology that yeah. rob calls squishy is that what he yeah, yeah exactly rob's always telling us to look squishy for the rocks <laughs> yes yeah, so the ones where Frenchy. i have been trained to look for rocks yeah. that are uh about cantaloupe sized oh because that's small enough that we can take it and it's reasonable and big enough that there's a chance that there's interesting stuff inside. That definitely makes sense. And angular, because that suggests that maybe there's not so much crust if you can still see the original angles of the rock. Mm -hmm. um, and not flat because of the problems I just mentioned. So roundish, but also angular and also not too big and not too small. <laughs> yeah, just about right. <laughs> yeah, Goldilocks rocks. Exactly. Ideally, they're like, I want it to just have fallen just now a million years ago from this interesting feature. Just waiting for us this, to come find it. This coral is pretty cool. Um, could we get a little closer to this one again as well? James and Panos and Co. Sorry, yeah. can you repeat that? I don't know if this is the exact same one we zoomed on before. I, I feel like we've come a little around. bit further. Yep. If we could look at that one, that'd be sure. great. And if we, it seems like we're a little bit ahead still. Yeah. So if so, uh, we are. Yeah, we could can. be cool to take a snip off the top of this actually, if there's the time for that. Because this is kind of a weird Chrysogorgia. Uh, of some kind. And when I looked through 
when I looked through the guide again after that first one, I confirmed my thought that it didn't seem like any of the major, obviously, like any of the major groups of Chryscorgia that we typically see. So, Of course, Steve might get here and be like, we know exactly what that is, but uh, it seems interesting to me. If we could zoom just a little further whenever James is ready. Yeah. So, Leela, what makes you say that it looks strange compared well, to other Chrysler you've seen? So these, like, long bottle brushy ones are usually more filled in, like a really well-filled in Christmas tree bottle brush thing, and that's Janiculata. And then there's also Tricolis, which is a little bit more sparse looking, but the way that the um, get this stable. branches are organized, there's almost like some zigging and zagging. It's like it, it moves around in a spiral. The branches mm -hmm. are like assorted around in a spiral and they're slightly wider in one part and narrower in the other. And I'm not seeing any of those characteristics. And the ones in the guide that it looks like are all just Chrysogorgia species question mark. So that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to collect. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, James, if you think we have the time, yep. can we please try and take like a 10, 15-ish centimeter snip off the top of this? Yes, absolutely. I'm just going to uh, set the ROV up a little bit closer. Okay. I will do the first one and I will show you. Okay, so you can see the last few, they... Oh, she left this in as our placeholder. Start time is now, UTC 10.30. Uh, it's going to be a grab. And it's going to be... All right. And then I look at what samples are already in here. So they slurped one and there's a another rock. there. So we could put it anywhere. Yeah. yeah, we could put it on the rock. We could put it over here. Um, do you want to? I might put it in here since it's kind of floaty. Um, so if we put it in there, then it will always be exposed to the thrusters. Whereas this, like they sometimes they half open the box, you know, so it's a little more in there. So I'll probably ask for it to go there. Why not do a slurp? Just because uh, that's you have more to, difficult you'd have things to break to it first. Like it's, if we're taking just a snip, we'll have to cut it, and then you would have to. You could feed that into the slurp, but is that more for things that are more difficult to collect without? It's good for being able to put it right in the box. It's things that you can just slurp up. Like this, you can't just slurp up. You have to break it first. Mm -hmm. You have to manipulate it first. So then you might as well just move it with that too. Gotcha. And we have the coral cutters on there, so the. The, um, I don't know if they showed you the manipulator, mm -hmm. but the closest to the yeah. wrist is um, like a couple centimeters of coral cutters that are perfect for that. Any gotchas with this? We have a good question here in the chat. It's saying, why is there one very large coral structure instead of many small corals, typical of a more shallow reef? So, oh, okay. Um, well, they're just, uh, it's a different kind of reef system. Or Jane, do you want to take this one? I can yeah, so it sounded like there was a couple parts to that question. Something yeah. about, so the first part asked, why is there just single corals kind of sparsely distributed as opposed to many kind of clustered? Is that Yeah, definitely. Like, that right? but, like, why is that one specifically so much, it seems to be larger than 
maybe some of the corals that we would see in more shallow reefs, or at least solitary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way the coral community is shaped is going to be determined by... Oh, hang on one sec. Um, yeah, you can put that on the starboard bio box. Yeah. Or if, if you're nervous about it, I mean, we can also put it in the, the forward if we don't have a lot of time to sort that out. Ooh, that's, uh... So we don't need the whole thing. So just uh, off the top of it, like 10 or 15 centimeters. I can't really tell anymore how much is above the frame yeah. of the camera. Uh, bio box, I think. Okay, hold on a sec here, let's... I feel like that's the kind of thing that loves to get stuck in the slurp. <laughs> kind of oh yeah, like we got quite a bit. So, yeah, uh... So higher than that. Okay, I'll tell you where I can... Oh yeah, you have the limit. There will be a limit here somewhere, yeah. Yeah, like, that would be good. If I can grab it there. Yeah, that's perfect. Taking home a Christmas tree. Cutters on the right side, okay. Yes, thank you for remembering. Oh wait, you're doing this one. Ah. Sorry, one moment. You wanna zoom on it? Okay. Um, after they take it, we'll zoom quick. I think it came off at the bottom. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Yeah, usually that works. Are we quite in the cutters? Yeah? Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Would it be possible for whisking it away just to zoom on a, l a little closer on it? Sure. It looks like Hercules is holding a flower for us. It does. <laughs> first flower in our coral bouquet. Okay. All right. Ah. I think I think you're right. Maybe a little down on the iris. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, if we can get it to starboard A or so, that would be awesome. But if you're worried about dropping it, we can put it in the front too. We were just talking about uh, the thruster that's above that bio box. Yeah. And that uh, possibility of that being... Um, getting sucked into there. So I would prefer to put it in the front, if that's okay with sure. you. Sure, yeah, we can do that. I know sometimes they disable that, but I don't know what scenario we're in right now. No, we're uh, able to use it right now. Perfect. So, for the sample logging, mm -hmm. anything else I need to add for this? Uh, yeah, all, uh, like all of this. So it's oh. on. <laughs> Alrighty. And until and we I actually, it ends up being a little wrong, longer, so around 20 centimeters, and that's going to be, we can put it in lambda. Ah, and roger that. Like I'll just bring it all the way back, and we'll be safe about it. Okay. Pan and tilt's much faster on the surface. Time and time, all that. Uh, no, just this. Okay. okay. And you don't. Ooh, not yet. We know. So we need to put the bio box here. How do you? Is it um, to get oh. the bio box? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the lighting should be okay.
not to Sorry? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say... You're in half. Okay, press the halt button. And now press the halt button again. If you long press the halt button, it goes into a calibration mode. You don't want to do that. Ah. Press, like, you know, All right, where you have to use the rocker. Okay. There we go. And I was doing what I expected to do. Yes, yeah, so the front ones are Lambda and Omega. Oh, this actually is way bigger than I thought. It's like 30 centimeters. We got. A decent bit to adapt. Uh oh. <laughs> Which oh, I one didn't is know, it I didn't pick? realize there was a divider there. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> oh, oh. It's in there. Give it a little bit That's of a nudge. That's hilarious. There. Yeah, give it a love tap. There we go. <laughs> okay, great. Safe Looks good. Sound. Nice work. Nice, James. Okay, and then now is usually when you would hit submit, but um, remember that that window preserves the time from when you first hit that button. Right. So if it's been open for a long time, manually change the time or just only open it as they're securing it and type in the whole thing and then hit submit. Got it. Um, so, and we're ending at 1040, so end time. And then we've written here what it is and where it went. Oh, I did you it wrote again, the description. Eh? Mm -hmm. So then we'd be ready for the next one. Okay. Dog's off. We can do this. So back to your uh, question, Ashley. So you had um, received a question about why you see the types of corals you oh, do in the certain settings that we're looking at. And so that is a function of a lot of the environmental parameters at a site. So for all of the deep sea corals, as opposed to shallower corals, these corals are feeding heterotrophically, capturing zooplankton, phytoplankton, small bits of organic material out of the water column. Mm. And so they need the right types of currents to deliver those food supplies, as well as you know, the right temperature regimes, all these different factors that are dynamic to the site have to be yeah. just right for the, um, the coral assemblages that we see to exist. And so in this site with uh, such sparse corals, it could just be that there are a few specialist species that yeah, are able worry, to I'll, I'll capitalize on the conditions of the site. I don't specifically know a lot. We have some um, quick stats that we can talk about with okay. the oxygen and the, um, the O2 concentrations, things that we oh. can see right now. We're seeing about yeah. 96 micromoles per liter. Some, you know, We've got a few stats that we can look at quickly. Another way we could study the site to find out more would be to put something like a long-term sensor down okay. and, and learn more about temporal changes in those conditions that help support the coral. So that that's kind of the the, uh, the reason why. Yeah, very interesting. And is it typical for them to be so tall yeah, yeah. specifically? For these types? Thank you. Yeah, Haisa, you seem like yeah. you maybe know a little bit more about this head? type of species. <laughs> Yeah, in the deep sea you can find different size of colonies um, and sometimes we call the difference between the shallow waters and the deep sea is like we used to call the deep sea uh, gardens, uh, coral gardens and there you can find a mix of species. Uh, predominantly you can find uh, the octocorals that to be considered more soft corals than what you find in the, the shallow water. So the difference is like Jane was explaining is the what they need to feed themselves. So usually the shallow waters they they have um, symbiosis uh, where they can um, um, 
get their food through, through photosynthesis, which is this symbiotic relationship. And the deep sea, for the other hand, they, need, they are filter feeders. Um, then they have a different way to acquire th their food. So usually the community you're going to find, even though it can be similar groups, like for instance, shallow waters, is more sclerotinian. That's the hard coral that we used to see in the, in the TV or in some of the um, uh, documentaries. And the uh, deep sea now, with the advances like we have here with ROV, uh, uh, and other um, technologies, that's making us able to see what is here. Before, we never thought we were going to find such a diversity. So, yeah, basically, we can have colonies of all kinds of size in sites that will be more than two meters tall. Wow, that's awesome. Um, Lynette, are we moving again? Yeah, we're just going to get going here. Lynette, can you hear me? Lynette? Am I talking? Okay. No. <laughs> Lynette, are we, uh, are we moving right now? We are not moving right now. Okay, whenever James is ready then. Yep. Um, and Michael, would you mind putting the still cam back on, please? I know I ask so much of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tim, I forgot that you're here with um, troubleshooting the triclops, but we're having a still cam computer issue if you ever have a moment to step away. Roger. That's the name I had heard for it, but I don't know if that's an affectionate name or the real name or... Affectionate might be a strong word. That's that's a pretty official uh, name at this point. Okay, it's official. <laughs> when someone starts calling something... It's official like and there's no spot. affection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I'm looking in that in the view up to the left, it looks like we're going up. Are we? Is Hercules climbing up yeah. the seamount? Slowly. Yeah, we are slowly going up slope. Another sea pen. Is that the one we just saw, or no? Nope. That's that's different. I think we're just going in circles. That looks like the same one. I was like, <laughs> is that the one we just sampled? I think it. I think it is. It's sh it's short er than it, it was. It is very late. I mean, you know, I was like, maybe I'm just saying things. While you're in a power cycling thing's mood, would you be able to power off the whole triclop system for a minute and then bring it back up? Was that to Michael? I can't hear you very loudly, Tim. Okay, I think well, I think Tim was asking for something, but it sounds like he, he's at the end of a very, very long, far away tunnel. <laughs> 
a cup on a string. If you asked if it was better, the answer was no. Roger. A little less quiet, but still very quiet. Yeah, I think if everyone else is quiet, we can hear you. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> Interesting. The mic is literally touching my desk. <laughs> I don't know if I can get any closer. <laughs> what, what, what is you were asking to cycle triclops? Uh, yeah, could you uh, power cycle triclops? do that uh no he wants the the jonathan yep <laughs> yep yeah yeah the 30 second count thing whatever Tim, while we have you, and Triclops is off, uh, it's saying that it can't connect to, I can't connect from the, the, the NUC on board to the NUC in the, in the Sexton housing. Um, and we've power cycled still chem as well. I don't know what it is it could be mad about. Roger, I'll see what I can do to check if it's on the network, but if it's Thank you. not there, my options are limited. Yep. Yeah, this it it feels good. I got a little bit ahead of it there. That thing is addicting. It looks like the rocks and things in this area are a little bit more sparse. Not so many big ones like the ones we were seeing earlier tonight. Um, Lynette, would you mind zooming out quick on a high pack for a moment, please? Okay, cool. Sweet, thank you. I guess we can uh, introduce ourselves to recipe on now. You can, everyone else is gone. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> You're the last, but not uh, least. Well, We've right. been waiting. That's fine, that's fine, it's cool, whatever. <sighs> Atlanta out. <laughs> it's just because you're so important. You've been so busy. Are you really not going to introduce yourself? I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> oh, no. I, 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 heard I heard something completely. He was yeah. legitimately busy there. For <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so I guess the person who's talking right now, which is me, uh, my name is Michael. I am the Atlanta pilot for this, uh, for this watch. Um, and um, yeah, I'm a PhD student at uh, UCLA, uh, studying physics, not anything marine related. Yeah, that's me. Are we going to start talking about plasma tonight? I mean, we, I mean if we want to. <laughs> let, let me tell you. Uh-oh. All right, go for it. It's all you. James. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you introduce Everyone else went already, man. Yeah. You yeah, introduced yourself? Yeah, buddy. You were very busy. Did you just tuned oh. me out or what? Oh, I, I guess. I thought it was <laughs> like the only... I thought it was just us. We weren't doing stuff. And then it's just like, what? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm sorry I checked out everyone, everybody. What's that up top of top screen? Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh, my God, it's a sponge. Please look at it. <laughs> Is it kind of V-shaped? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a vasey sponge. Mm. Let's work our way over there. I feel like somebody put it right on top of that rock. Or is it three sponges? No, it's one with two shadows. Oh my god, this is one I know well, and for some reason the name is totally failing me. It is not Dictialis, it is... Corby Dallas. No. <laughs> My good guess. Corbin Dallas. <laughs> Corbitellinids are are sponges and you're pretty close to that name, so did you just guess that? You guys can zoom in on that if you um, want to. Um, we're zoom pretty sure. we're pretty stable here. Wow, 
it's beautiful. Obviously a glass sponge. It was a glass sponge, so I was just going to say. It looks like it would be a perfect vase for a flower. Gosh, this is going to bother me. Oh, look at the patterns. I'm oh, yeah, it's nice. And I'm not that bothery. A sponge. Oh, it's a, uh, oh, no, it, it left the tip of my head again. Sorry. Um, would you mind taking good pictures of this? Thank you. Oh, is that like a, uh, what is it? Regadrella. Regadrella. There we go. Could you spell that? Uh, re <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's how I spell, too. <laughs> I got it. I got it. It's R-E-G-A-D-R-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. <laughs> nice. I like it. Kind of like Cinderella. Can you spell that one more time for me, Leela? Yes. <laughs> We're really <laughs> testing you. <laughs> R-E-A. No, sorry. R-E-G-A-D-R-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. And could we actually zoom on the thing right next to it, the dead? The dead um, thing, yeah. Dead it looks stock. like a flute or something. Looks like another sponge. Do you see it? Interesting how it's laying on the ground there. Yeah. Dead friend. Mm. It's just sleeping. They're dead forayed sponges that we see sometimes that look like those bumpy spines kind of, but it's hard to tell from this angle what that would be there. All right, cool. Thank you. Awesome. First exciting sponge Yay. in the watch. Mm. It was beautiful. seems like a few of those rocks around that sponge are a little unique in their color. Is it just because they're not covered like the others with sediment? Yeah, it is kind of interesting though that that little cluster there isn't, maybe they're a little higher up out of the boundary layer or something, I don't know, mm. get cleaned a little more. We've got a question for you, James. What is the distance? How far apart are Herx lasers? I believe they're 10 centimeters. All right. So we use, use those to try and scale, obviously, and I always am trying to guess how big the rocks are that we collect. I'm like, it's like, you know, just only like 20 centimeters. And then it comes up and it's like a 40 centimeter mm. rock. It's like half a meter. It's like taking up the whole E box. It looks like a cantaloupe on the screen. <laughs> yeah, I swear. <laughs> it's so hard to judge scale looking through a it's camera. so yeah, hard. Definitely. <sighs> All right, and we are ascending. 2,119 meters now. I'm curious what there is higher up. Let's see. In some areas of the Central Pacific, like this depth we're at right now would be kind of near the middle bottom end of a high, typically higher coral density yeah. depth range. But, mm. and, and there totally could be in this depth on some other side of the seamount or a different feature where it's a bit more steep or something, you know, it could, could be super interesting, but I you, you never another, know. Another regadrella out there? Uh -oh. yeah, yeah, I see yeah, it. Something, this one's almost a little oh, did I swing different around looking again? shape. Yeah, yeah, you're swinging. Uh, is there like something very on that tapered. rock down there, too? Oh, yeah, shoot. there is something on the rock. That looks like um, another sponge. Oh, that rock Can we zoom on them both? <laughs> it's going to have to wait. <laughs> Until next time. No. Tell me to back up on, too. Um, 
I think I don't think it's terribly pressing at the moment. Try to keep that. Come back to that. There we go. We got you back. Did you? Uh, no, our turns look okay. All right. We'll just. Uh, Yeah. Oh, you're, oh. yeah, you're going. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. Yeah, because you're pretty far ahead in front of me. This this is deceiving, this picture, because I'm also like pointing at a shallow right. angle. Okay, so. I'll just wait here. Um, we got another ship move, so uh, you're coming closer to me. We just gotta be patient, we'll get there. Patience is a virtue. So while we're waiting for that ship move and just a few little adjustments, okay. I, it, it kind of looks like it's snowing up there on the top, sure. doesn't it? I said, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what that marine snow does and, and the importance of it in this ecosystem? All the particles that are falling down. Do you want to describe that a little bit? Jane, I was noticing in some videos from the last um, visit to Johnston that that marine snow, they were mentioning just the importance of that in some of these um, corals and, and different sponges that are here. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so marine snow, it's um, essentially things that are falling down from the surface towards the deep sea. So I think they were even mentioning on the last watch, they were talking a little bit about how the deep sea is very food limited Yeah. Uh, as, you know, most of what we think of as food supply uh, is organic and is produced at the surface by things that can photosynthesize. And as that sinks, it is eaten up by everything in the water column before it reaches deeper depths. So um, there are a few ways that marine snow or you know, other food particles can be driven to depth, different types of mixing in the water column. Um, and then marine snow itself can, can be made up of um, partially inorganic material as well. Mm. And so you see all these kind of particles floating down. Some of it may contain viable food. Some of it may just be kind of detritus. Some of it may be inorganic completely. So it's kind of a mix of, of all kinds of these little types of particles, but um, it is, you know, in part driving some of the, the ecosystems, even at depth. So do those sponges just kind of absorb it as it's falling? Sponges. Uh, the so. sponges are filtering water, um, so they filter in through pores in one area of their body called os ostea, and they filter out through other um, pores in their body. And uh, somewhere in between there, inside their body, they uh, have chambers, or the ones we're looking at here usually are organized in a way where they have chambers that are lined um, with special cells. Uh, called collar cells or coanocytes, and they basically have these little whips, and um, those whips both help to keep the current moving through their body and also trap the food that's in the water as it passes through their body, um, and then they uh, take that food up. So they're also, similarly to a lot of the organisms down here, similarly to corals trying to get what they can out of what's in the water, including all the marine snow yeah. um, components that Jane just mentioned. Are we um, too far ahead to be able to take a look at the sponge on the left? Not the one that we're, is in frame right now, but the one that's kind of like on our side. Uh, which way? Yeah, if you uh, pan left or turn left, I guess. Right there. Uh, still out of frame. It's on that rock that you can see you're starting, starting to turn toward in Atalanta, Kim.
Yeah, should be that rock right in front of us, I think, now, but lower. Lower. Yeah, if you tilt it down. Oh, I think I see it in that one. Oh, yep, there it is, you're all right. right. All right, all right. There it is. So from this far away, that looks to me like a kind of sponge. It's hanging almost like upside down off this rock, but they have these bissel threads uh, that they use to anchor themselves to rocks. If it's I'm not totally wrong from this far away, but we'll see. It's really neat how it's just kind of clinging to the side of that rock. Yeah, I could also totally be wrong. But we will see wow. sponges like that at some point. <laughs> We're getting closer. Zoom in. You want? Pretty interesting how we aren't seeing any more shrimp either, too. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, as close as we can get would be awesome. Can you turn the iris down? Please. So it does look like that kind of sponge where it has those threads. You can kind of see them on top that are usually on, they're at the bottom of the sponge and they um, and the anchor reason. anchor the sponge. That looks, looks like, like there's the yeah, what's that? actually sponge. yeah a bunch on this rock. So there's a solitary hydroid. That's what's oh, down and to the left of the sponge. The sponge is a ferronematid sponge. I can write that in for you, Jane. But yeah, there's a hydroid, and then above, there's also something on top of the rock, a black coral. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And maybe mm -hmm. even a chrysogorgid to the left next to that, and then a squat lobster in the background oh, on the I left. See so an there's ophiroid. actually and an ophiroid <laughs> right all here. Kinds of there's things all happening right here. There's <laughs> all kinds of stuff on this rock. A it ton of blue life. circles. It's crazy. Oh, wow. This is the solitary hydroid. Uh, I'm doing a bad job. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to go to the draw. It, yeah. There. There you go. <laughs> and this is the black coral. It was. <laughs> and then on the left of that, I think, is a chrysogorgid, maybe. Is that a brittle star? Uh, yeah, the ophiroid, yep. Let me take another kirk here. Um, and then what kind of sponge did you say? You said ferronematid. Um, is that a pH? Ferro yes, it is. Nematid. Like that, ferronematid. Is there something behind the black coral there, too? Yeah, I think there's a Chrysogorgia over there, oh, okay. but I could be wrong. It's hard to tell from yeah, here. We're pretty far like away. Hiding back there. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of those like blow up um, dolls on the side of the street where they're trying to get your attention to come in. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, right. I'm like here. outside the car wash or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so one, one thing interesting about yeah. sponge Army. is that beside the, they are animals, but they don't have proper tissue. They don't. They're like some of the simplest multicellular animals that there are, they have cellular level organization. Mm -hmm. And they have really cool, some of those cells are actually really cool. Um, they have these amoebocyte cells um, and those can actually differentiate is, is the sciencey word for it, but like change into any kind of cell that the sponge needs. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a cool thing that sponges have. If they're like, I need more of those feeding cells, then it could become one of those. So there's something right. special about this rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 